Chúa à, và các bạn um, giving up or, or taking on. So cái schedule hôm nay giống như là, giống như là tuần trước á, I, I'll speak for about uh, you know half an hour and then we'll have uh, 20 minutes of prayer and reflection and the last you know 10 minutes we will have uh, four questions you are free feel free to ask okay um and we'll start prayer in, in a minute but i want to uh introduce uh reintroduce this idea of giving up or taking on you know the main question most of us ask in lent is what am i giving up for lent However, this question is part of a greater question. And the greater question is, how am I called to greater life with God? Chúa muốn một điều nhiều nhất là ban cho chúng ta sức sống của Chúa với Chúa. What God wants the most is to share greater life with all of us. And so Lent is this time to clear whatever keeps us from being with God. So we walk these 40 days towards Easter to, in order to be to live more fully with the risen Christ beyond any death of any form. So whatever we give up or whatever we take on is a response to this desire of God to give us greater life. What did Jesus say? I have come to give you life, life to the full. So instead of talking about giving up, I'm going to talk more about taking on. And for us these days to take on, to grow in gratitude is this best way to receive the offer of greater love from God. So just as we did last week, I'm going to ask us to receive life by receiving breath. Because to pray is to breathe. Because breath is like God, always available, always free, always life-giving. And just like we take breath for granted, we take God for granted. And we forget that God is around. So let us engage in deep breathing to help us receive and to be present to ourselves, to one another across the mile, and most importantly, present to God, the one whose presence and love is always available, always offered, and always life-giving. So please join me. Take Seven deep breaths. Breathe in fully, breathe out completely. And as we breathe in, let us simply receive. Receive life. Receive God's breath. Receive the same life as people who struggle to breathe because they're suffering from COVID-19. Or people who are, cannot breathe because they are choked by injustices, or they are suffocating from the worries and stresses of life.
Chúa. Cảm ơn Chúa tụ họp chúng con cùng với nhau. Trong buổi tối này chúng con xin một ơn được đón nhận gì Chúa muốn ban cho mỗi người chúng con. Give us the grace, Lord, to receive whatever life, whatever gift you choose to bless each of us tonight. Help us to receive fully, to breathe fully, and to live more fully with you. So last week, we mentioned a little bit how the latest scientific finding, particularly in the past 20 years with positive psychology, agrees, supports the ancient Christian wisdom that gratitude is key to the spiritual life. And that gratitude is a dynamic that includes three movements. It begins with remembering some gift or blessing. It continues with receiving or accepting that grace and it culminates in responding. Last week, we explore how remembering opens the door to gratitude by awakening something alive in us, like trust, like love. Today, we will unpack what it means to receive a gift, a grace that is awakened in us. There are obvious blessings in our lives and there are disguised ones. We know what the bless, obvious blessings are. The disguised ones are harder to see as a gift. For example, is this coronavirus pandemic is a gift? A lot of bad things have been happening. People die. People lose job. People struggle in their family. People are more addicted. People are more lonely. In the beginning of this pandemic, my family discovered something very painful for us. We discovered early last March that my mom has cancer. She's under treatment right now. Most likely she'll be okay. So then you could say, Chachi, how could pandemic be a gift? How could your mom's cancer be a gift? I agree. Sickness in itself is not a gift. Catastrophe itself is not a gift. The gift is in the opportunity that we get. Now, with the evil, there's no opportunity. There's just pain and suffering. But with God, there's always an opportunity. How so? An opportunity to see things differently than we've never seen before. So how could blessing, how could gifts, blessings be disguised? Well, take a look at what we've been learning, what opportunity that has come up to this almost one year of pandemic, of sheltering in, of a lot of diminishment. What are the opportunity? Are there opportunity in this past year to connect? 
to connect with our families and friends. My family are more connected now than we were before, actually. Uh, without this opportunity, I actually won't be with you guys like this across the miles. An opportunity to really go back to what is essential, to show care, to show love, to get you at the heart of our faith. And now, you know, this past year, you don't have to go to Mass because the, the, um, the requirement to go to Mass every Sunday is not there. And now you get an opportunity. Why is Mass important to me? Why is it essential in my life? Learning and unlearning. What, are, what have we been learning? My gosh, we've been learning that there are a lot of things wrong in our world that we have swept under the floor. Racism, economic disparity, our, the way our healthcare system is delivered, the way we miss we, the opportunity given much less to black people to brown people. And we discover a lot, that a lot of things, and we discover a lot, a lot of our habits are not that helpful. And so we're learning much more what is essential work, what is unnecessary work. Essential work is what is most essential to human living, what is most important. We also have an opportunity to give, to let go of ourselves. You know, Pope Francis says wonderfully, the heroes of this past year are the ordinary people, the essential workers, the healthcare workers, the teachers who show up, parents who have to do so many things for their kids. We do learn to let go. And we also learn to grow, to heal, to forgive, to accept, to accept one another as we continue to quarantine. And so with God, there's always an opportunity to grow. Opportunity to grow. You know what, one of the things for me, an opportunity to grow, if I could travel this past year, I wouldn't be home with my community as much. And because I'm home, I'm actually much closer to them. So we had a, a scare. One of the priests visited you know, his family and his, his dad had COVID. So when he came home to us, we had to, we had to go shut down and quarantine. I happened to be away for half a day when he came home. So I was not exposed to him. So guess what I get to do? I get to serve food and bring food to Moi Chai in their rooms. We were all shut in our room for a whole 10 days. And I got the opportunity to be a waiter, to be a airline attendant. I brought drinks, I brought food, I took away the food, I mean, the empty stuff. And my gosh, do you know what so, so many of them told me? Three, we so much appreciate your sacrifice for us. Opportunity. Opportunity in something that is very unfortunate. So, there is, in every moment of our life, God wants to give life. And God wants to give us obvious blessings and disguised blessings obvious gifts, hidden gifts. The question is, do we recognize it? Do we receive it? Now, if you think about, just reflect on when someone gives you a gift for Christmas or for your birthday or out of the blue, what happens when you try to receive it? Does it involve three things? involves acknowledging the gift, their thoughtfulness. It involves 
accepting the gift. It's like, oh, you gave me this? Wonderful. I've been waiting for it. Oh, you give me this? Uh, I have five of them, right? And then the second part of receiving is you accept it. And then the third part, oftentimes, in accepting it, there's some sort of abiding, some sort of connection with the one who gives. Không phải chúng ta nhấn món quà, chúng ta nhấn cái mối tình, cái mối liên hệ, cái sự quan tâm, cái tình thương của người cho món quà. Chúng ta đón nhấn họ. So the gift, receiving the gift, is meant to draw us to the giver. So let me elaborate on each dimension of receiving. Acknowledge. You know, many good things come to us as life, you know, to me in my life, but I don't always see myself as a gift. For example, I can treat myself to a flavorful ice cream with lots of toppings. But because I bought it myself, I made it happen, I don't consider it as a gift. For something to be a gift, it has to be given. You can't buy it, you can't steal it, you can extort it. It has to be a gift out of someone's goodness, God's goodness. It has to be a gift. Maybe that's why it's hard for us those of us who do a lot, who give a lot, it's hard for us to acknowledge something as a gift. Because when we do that, we have to explicitly say that I didn't make it happen. I cannot buy it. I cannot earn it. I'm not worthy of it. I don't deserve it. It's like asking for help or accepting help. We are humbled by someone's goodness and it makes us uncomfortable. Because now we think we are dependent on their generosity. Mình phải nở cái người cho cho mình món quà. As someone who has grown up self-reliant, this is really hard for me. As someone who relies on myself more than on God in many areas of my life, I struggle to depend on God. I often make it about myself. You know, some years ago in prayer, I keep hearing Jesus or God saying, I miss you. And as, as soon as I heard, I miss you, I'm like, oh shoot, I'm not praying enough. I need to slow down. I need to work hard. I need to pray more. And when I share this struggle to carve out more time with God, my spiritual director said, tree, listen to what God is saying to you. And I said, it's very obvious. I'm too busy, I should change my life. She goes, no. Is that what Jesus is saying? What is he saying? And I told you know, my speech director, I said, he's saying, he misses me. And she says, yes. He's not asking me to change. He's simply being vulnerable to say, I miss you. And it is vulnerable when someone says, I miss you. And slowly when I acknowledge, wow, he misses me. And when I let go of my self-reliance, then I recognize God's tenderness and God's vulnerability. And so when I accepted God's desire to be with me, then I made more time for prayer. Instead of making time for prayer because I feel guilty, now it comes a place of freedom, gratitude, because of what? God begins this. God misses me. Accept. Two years after I accepted this invitation, this vulnerability, I miss you, and I gave more time for prayer quality time with my friend Jesus. I was shocked on the retreat when I sensed him saying, I simply want to be with you, my delight. And Jesus says, tree, I simply want to be with you, my delight. And I went like, whoa, Jesus, 
was a little intense. I know you want to be with me. I know you miss me, but I'm your delight. Like God creating the world. And after each day, God says everything is good. And then when God creates Adam and Eve, human being, God said, it is very good. I am very good to you. Whoa. And then when I said, God, I struggle with being good. Yeah, Jesus says, I know you do. I know you don't trust your own goodness, but trust my goodness in you. So slowly, I begin to accept. And I find myself welcoming God more into what I do, whatever I felt, whatever I've done something bad or I've experienced shame or lust or anger or loneliness. Now, instead of trying to run away, I simply ask, Chú ơi, chú vẫn, ở, chú vẫn muốn ở với con hả? You still want to be with me? So little did I know that in accepting God, that I'm God's delight, I make this journey from my head to my heart, from knowing about God's love to really experiencing God's love. And you know, a lot of us this Lent, we know about God's love from our head. Nhưng mà nó không có thấm vào lòng. Nó không có thấm vào lòng mà nó không có biến đổi được cuộc sống của chúng ta. Vì chúng ta quá busy làm, chúng ta dựa vào những gì mình làm và không làm. Chúng ta không để cho Chúa tỏ tình thương mà chúng ta dám đón nhận cái tình thương vô biên, vô điều kiện của Chúa. The third one, abide. Enjoy, enjoying and relishing the, you know, chua. If acknowledging is seeing the gift and accepting is physically receiving the gift, then abiding is opening and enjoying what's inside the gift and not just the giver, not just the gift, but the giver. Nhiều lúc chúng ta ý, chú ý vào cái món quà, chúng ta quên đi cái tình thương của cái người ban cho món quà mà quan trọng hơn cái người ban cho món quà. Because God doesn't want to give God's gift. God gives, wants to give God's self. And in this pandemic, one of the things that God wants to show me is, I want to be with you, to be here with me. And this past year for all of us, for me, it's not easy. Oh my God, it's not easy to be here. Because to be here sometime in this pandemic, we feel overwhelmed, we feel lonely, we feel like we don't have it together. And we feel like, and you know, you know, to, you know, to be honest, Two months ago, I, I experienced um, what I call care fatigue. Uh, care fatigue. You know what that means? Chúng ta giúp nhiều người quá, chúng ta quá mệt. Chúng ta không có care cho chính mình được. Và người khác đến gần cái mình chảy because, oh my gosh, I can't care for another person. And in those moments now, I could say, Chúa ơi, Chúa ở với con nha, con, cho con ở với Chúa nha. Because it's really hard. So a lot of us experience screen fatigue. A lot of experience, of experience caring fatigue. And so when we experience this fatigue, we think that, oh, because of that, Chúa chạy trốn hay là Chúa không có thương, Chúa không thích nữa. But precisely in those moments, precisely in the moments, God wants to be with you and I. And Chúa chỉ muốn sao? It's okay, be here with me in your loneliness, in your fatigue, in you being overwhelmed. And this is one of the promises with Jesus. 
Remain in me as I remain in you. Remember what I said earlier? What God wants the most is to give you and I greater life, life with God. So St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of my order, has a very helpful insight. He says that the gifts are meant to draw us to the giver. So God gives us gifts, blessings, obvious in disguise, and through it, God draws us to God's self. Chúa thu hút chúng ta qua những món quà Chúa ban cho chúng ta qua cuộc sống. Món quà của gia đình, món quà trong xã hội, trong sinh hoạt, trong đức tin, món quà trong cái sự our diminishment, những sự thiếu sót, những cái nhỏ mỏ, những cái hèn mọn, những cái mỏng giòn của chúng ta and through our feelings. So that because all these gifts are meant to draw us to the giver. So when I acknowledge the gift received, I acknowledge a bond that binds me to the giver. Some of you may recognize my voice is hoarse, and sometimes I stutter. It's taking me years. And when I was young, I used to suffer from poor self-esteem. But now more than ever, I see that my voice is such a gift because it helps me to be humble, to be patient, It helps me to rely on God and it actually helps me in ministry, in the way I help people pray, in the way I listen to how God speaks deep in our hearts. And so when we are giving a gift, especially a disguised gift, and, and last week, you know, I think one of you asked about how do we see something that's painful? Yes. Painful things or disguised gifts. What do we tend to do? We tend to do this or we tend to do this? Chúng ta đóng lại hay chúng ta start to fight. So this is the fundamental posture between any gift. Do I receive it or do I resist it? So let's talk a little bit about Some of the way we resist, okay? Open hands or clenched fists. What are some of the major obstacles? I share with you about mine, reliance. It's up to me, I need to make it happen. Um, Self-pressure. So I'm a practical atheist. By that I mean I'm acting and living as if God doesn't exist in my life. Objection, oh, we do, we do this a lot. Oh God, no, no, I don't deserve that gift. I'm not beautiful enough. I'm not content enough. I'm not generous enough. I am not patient enough. I don't deserve it. It's too good to be true. Well, we may not deserve it, but people who love us still want to give us things. So this way, sometimes we are more comfortable with our darkness than our light. Yes, chúng ta có vấn đề. Yes, chúng ta có tội lỗi, nhưng người khác và Chúa vẫn thương. And sometimes you and I go into a you know, pity party. You know what a pity party is? Woe is me, woe is me. Illusions. God must be tired of me. Other people must be suffering more, so I can't receive this gift. But maybe it's because we are tired of ourselves. And we are tired of being forgiven. But as Pope Francis reminds us, God is never tired of forgiving us. God is never tired of coming closer to us. God is never tired of giving you and I greater life, even though we keep messing up. Expectations. I want the gift to look like this. I want it on my own terms. I want it this way. 
If the pandemic does anything, it blows away all of our expectations and our illusions that we are in control. And lastly, entitlement. I deserve this. I use my money, I use all my effort. Our culture drills into us this false sense that we are entitled to this. And we are privileged because of our capacity or because of our money. Let me close with an experience of God that keeps coming back to me, particularly in this year. So I'm oftentimes like a child running around playing in a yard, busy with much activity, living my life. And God is like a mom, watch, like my mom, watching me with love, waiting for me to come near. And so whenever I get hurt or I get pain or I fall, it's like I get a splinter in my finger. I would run and cry to her or to God and say, hey, can you take this pain? Can you take this boo-boo away? And knowing that I can focus on my pain, God, like my mother says, honey, look at me. And as I look at her, I temporarily forget the pain while she pulls out the splinter. And once I get better, I would give God or her a quick kiss and then run along to pray. And that's what I do in life a lot. Now can chúa chạy đến chúa, chúa giải quyết vấn đề sau một cái, bye bye, cảm ơn, chạy đi. But nowadays, in this pandemic time, I, can, I tend to catch this maternal gaze of God, like my mom, inviting me, be here, my delight, stay longer with me. And that changes so much. And I'm more likely to stay with God because the way God looks at me, the more I remain in this maternal gaze, the more my heart softens with gratitude. And you might say, well, Chachi, Chachi tu ba chuk nam, you are holier than, you know, than we are. Maybe, maybe not, my friends. I don't think I'm the only one God is crazy about or tender with. In this di difficult time, God, the divine physician, wants to draw your gaze to pull out whatever splinter is hurting us. When that healing takes place, God invites us to stay, abide in me, stay with me. Let me give you greater life. Let me transform you, your life greater. It's strange, but in my wildest dream, I've never imagined, even in this pandemic, I've lost a lot of friends, a lot of priests to COVID. It's horrible. It's sad. It's bad at times. But in this past year, I've never imagined that God, that I would experience God wanting to be with me with such confidence, such tenderness, and deep joy, which includes playfulness. So my dear friends, God wants to give you and I life through the gifts, obvious and disguised. The obvious gifts we can tell. It's the disguised ones that are really gifts. The moment of pain. How do we do this? Learn to be surprised. So, in the next seven, 10 minutes, I'm gonna ask you to sit back and relax and let this guided prayer help you to acknowledge, to accept and to abide in grace, in God's blessing.
Welcome to this form of the awareness exercise, a way of activating our capacity to receive, to cultivate gratitude as we acknowledge grace, accept the gift, and abide in God. Don't worry about trying to make this examine happen or how deeply you can receive. All you have to do is breathe fully and let God's Spirit pray through you. I will use the first person pronoun which I invite you to apply to yourself. I take Seven deep breaths. With each breath, I receive strength, life, peace. As I continue to welcome life and as I breathe in, I gently say, come Holy Spirit, labor through me. Let me see with the eyes of Christ and feel with his very heart. As I look back in the past few days, what one or two experience surprised me and draw me? They don't have to be the most dramatic they could be simple, even ordinary, yet they catch my attention as I review my day. And as I recall this one or two experience in greater details, how am I surprised? What's my opportunity?
Is there an opportunity to connect? To be seen or cared for or loved? Or to accept even something difficult? Or to learn as well as unlearn? or to be healed. As I continue to remember, to receive, I thank God for that experience, that gift, that opportunity. present to me, Lord, walking through me, in me. What do you want to show me about myself, about you? I remain in gratitude. I allow whatever tenderness to take place between God and I. A loving look, a pat on the shoulders, a warm hug, A gentle kiss. Even a being sad with or delighting in.
I allow a mutual resting, enjoying, delighting to take place between God or Jesus or Mary and I. I thank God for this opportunity to remember, to receive, to respond in gratitude. Come on, cha, quý trưởng. Maybe that was a little lower volume. Then. Um, maybe just for uh, three minutes. If um, just take one of these questions that might apply to your uh, prayer in the past ten minutes, and just to journal, even just with a few lines about them. Okay, một trong những một trong ba những câu hỏi này được rồi. Okay, just give yourself that gift. Just three minutes.
có loại cách chữa nếu muốn tự mà tiếp tục viết thì vẫn có thể but is there any questions or comments you want to ask or any thing you want to share about this um, learning to be grateful by focusing on receiving you can feel free to ask them to go by foot but actually before i i i handle this so um in two hours i'm gonna make live a web page just for you guys it'll be christus christ us ministry.org slash t um t t m t and that's a call um the the prayer we did last week the prayer we did this week and also a prayer for one of you ask how do i be especially present to painful difficult situation um so these three prayers will be on there for you guys to continue to practice these are very concrete ways to uh, tap gratitude so that you know so um christ christ us ministries.org slash t t n t can you send that okay so những thắc mắc những tâm tình muốn chia sẻ please feel free to you can unmute yourself Again, either I did such a horrible job, hi, Jay. I have a question. Yes, Christina. Um. So when when you said that you you shared um that God was telling you that He missed you, um, how how do we cultivate sort of like um opportunities to be able to to hear God. Um, yes. First of all, when I say God speaks to me, it's not like the way you speak to me, right? So just like um, just like you have different language with certain friends, right? Some friends you talk more, sometimes you you do things more. And a lot of your friends in Fuji, you serve together more. So we do that by cultivating um, these connection so so again when we practice gratitude they they give us a clue to connection right so just like with your friend right so what a friend you have when you have a connection either through something good or something painful you have a connection right you want to build for that friendship you build on that connection you go back to it and you return to it and which you work at it so in my case I go back and, and so when I hear God said, I miss you, I'm like, uh, you sure? And I try to listen to it. I, I try to stay with it. Does that make sense, Christina? So notice what is that connection and try to build on it. Just like you do with the friendship. And that's how we learn to listen to, get to annoy. Because God does communicate with each of us in, in our own unique way. Is that yeah, clear enough? Yeah. Yes, huh? yes, that's clear. Um, yeah, I was just thinking like it would, it would um, kind of go, I was trying to think um, if we had to take that time to to listen or is it, um, like you said, Cha, if it's in um, listening in the daily life, then not necessarily having to seek that encounter then, Cha? Yes, we're open to it. And actually, Um, something basic you can do, Christina. Uh, God, help me to listen to you. And is this, is this the way you're trying to communicate with me? So ask for that grace and then keep paying attention to that, whatever that opportunity offers. And for a lot of us, oftentimes, 
the opportunity to be with God is to rest, to really rest. And let ourselves rest, rest from worry and rest from a lot of stuff. It's also why um, I think it's crucial for all of us who serve to go on a spiritual retreat at least one weekend a week. Not something we put on, not something we land, you have something for ourselves. This is what, you know, Chabin and, and I and Tai Zhiyong were trying to cultivate in the Tunyi family. Mỗi người chúng ta là huynh trưởng, chúng ta dành some time in the year, một lần. Chúng ta đi tính tâm cho chính mình, not cho người khác, not vì người khác, just for ourselves. And it does a lot, it helps a lot. Okay, the reflection of receiving a gift, this is from T. Also ask us to abide with the giver. It's easy for us to only focus on the gift on ourselves, to recognize the greater gift, or oh, yes. Thank you, Chi. Because you know why, Chi? Because cái tình á, khi chúng ta chú trọng vào cái người thương mình á, chúng ta chú, you know, chúng ta chú trọng vào cái, you know, cái tình, that, that care, that love, that is very life-giving. That is very life-giving. So when we're able to focus on that, change everything. And you guys know this. You guys are hun trưởng again and again and again because something, something about chúa, about serving, for helping các em long ago or whenever, that got to your heart. You làm được cái tình đó. Yes, follow that. That's the gift. That's what God wants to give you and I. You know, Komodo um, Cha, he's a good friend. All right, these day three, sometimes I feel like a, oh, no, a, oh, I feel like a fog. Because what happened in my day, because we don't get a chance to go in many places, he, he know, like, one day looks like another. I just forget the many blessings I have in my day. I have to check my calendar to notice what happened in the day. And, but he's doing that, he says, and he says, this is simple to me, but I'm going back to what is basic, to learn to count simple blessings in my day. And I think for a lot of us, những người mà busy, and I suspect a lot of us, you, you're very busy, count our blessing, not with just our mind, but with receiving it. And so gratitude does that so much. Chúng ta ý thức, chúng ta đón nhận, and từ đó, next week we will talk about how do we respond out of this. So, ý thức cái tình, đón nhận cái tình, and đáp trả cái tình. That's our life of faith. Joseph Wu, you ask about how do you receive blessings in pain last week? Was it was that you? It may not be on, but that was that question, Jack. Yeah. Yes. So, so when I talked about looking for opportunities, is that a way? Yes. Look for opportunities. Always opportunity, ritual. Always opportunity. Because guess what? When you feel overwhelmed, what is your opportunity? To acknowledge you're overwhelmed, to ask for help. And I, you know, someone you know, told me recently, Chào ơi, I have so much responsibility trong đoàn này nó, but I feel like I have to care, I have to care everything, I feel overwhelmed. And I told him, hey, do you, do you have an opportunity? For what, Chà, to fail? I said, no, to ask for help. And, and I told him, I told him this story, that there's a story of a dad told his son, who's about 17, hey son, there's a, there's a rock outside in our yard. I don't know how it got there in the front yard. Could you move it? You're strong. And the son goes out and he goes, oh yeah, my dad thinks I'm strong. So he, um, he goes out and he tried to move by himself with his arms, Lynn Budge. 
And then his dad walked by and said, son, use your strength. And the guy's like, dad, I'm using my strength. And he goes, oh, maybe he means, um, maybe, maybe he means let's be clever. So he like it, you know, he like a stick and then he lay small rock, you know, like, like a fulcrum and he jumped and he, and he, yeah, and he used a fulcrum and didn't budge. His dad goes through, you know, walks through His dad said, son, use your strength. And now he gets frustrated. He goes, dad, can you see I'm using my strength? I'm using my mind. And then his dad smiled and said, um, no, you haven't, you haven't asked for help. Our strength is dual. We can ask for help, but we rely on ourselves a lot. So opportunity, um, in pain, there's opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity everywhere. In failure, it's a lot of opportunity. So look for opportunity because Makui, no opportunity. Chua, always opportunity. Oh, and also, how do you learn opportunity? Recognize there's some sort of surprise. Some not like, huh? Oh, okay. And by the way, you know what they're saying is? When God closes doors, God opens windows. Look for those windows. It doesn't mean being op optimistic all the time. It means let, uh, let your situation opens up your perspective. Uh, we gotta look for openings. There's always opening everywhere. And those openings are opportunities for life. Jewel offers that. You guys are still on, you can go now. But you're still on, so either you would want to listen or you want to ask questions. Uh, but I do want to acknowledge the hơn bảy giờ rồi. Tôi xin mọi người um, cứ tự do, feel free to leave. Thank you for being present. If we see you next week, great. Uh, ChristusMinistry.org/ttnt will be on within an hour. I have it done. I just need to put it live. You're, you're so mesmerized, Cass. So that's why I think everyone is still on. Is just thirsty to listen to you talk. But I'm um, so, in the of... so is so is mấy con ruồi nó you know nó đậu trên cái um, trên uh, 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 trên con voi mesmerizing. <laughs> exactly right. Well, in, in the interest of time, um, chúng con xin cảm cảm ơn cha thật là nhiều. And uh, thank you really for for really unpacking what it means to to take on and to help us recognize the gifts that are in, in disguise and um, reminding us to not just, just know God's love, but also to be open to the gift and to experience God's love. And I think that's that's powerful. And by all the Hunju, you know, with what Jas said earlier, strength is um, is in asking for help. And I think often a lot of us, we, we organize a lot, we put on a lot, but rarely that we take the strength to sit in, to receive the retreat to make time for ourselves, to immerse ourselves. And this is partly what we're trying to push across from Chow. So I invite all of you, uh, grab your fellow Hun Chung uh, next week and join us, same time, same link, uh, for the last segment of, um, of Cha Chi's uh, retreat here with us. And Cha, we'll, we'll think of you and we'll pray for your mother as well. We'll keep her in our prayers. Yeah. Thank you. After three times, she got her second vaccine today. Oh, after, that's after, a question. Uh, after three tries, yes. <laughs> Well, uh, her surgery, yeah, her surgery coming up. But I will stay a little longer if you want, if you have more comments or more questions. I will stay in, I will. I can stay on for another 20 minutes. Exactly. You guys Great. are that important. Right. Thank you, Jeff. Well, for Thank those, you. if you have other questions, you have other comments for free, by all means. Uh, it's uh, very much open to a dialogue. And uh, if not, if you have other um, responsibilities, we'll see you back here next week at the, at the same time, nine o'clock Eastern time and the same link. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe you can help us with this. So as, as we uh -huh. um, engage with some of our, our and uh, we, we come to them to kind of share some of these messages, what, what insight, what wisdom do you have for us to kind of relay this to them so that they truly see uh, the value in uh, yielding themselves to the help to uh, receiving these gifts? Because often we, we think of ourselves as organizer, as, as planner, as doer. We do it, Kekem needs it. 
but not necessarily for us. Um, maybe if you can share with us so that we can, can invite others or at least speak to other Winjung for, uh, for the remainder of Lent. That's a great question. I think the best way, thường thường người Việt chúng ta, sometimes chúng ta hay dùng những, những danh từ phải hay là nên. That's good for law. Nhưng mà trong trường hợp này đó, share with them how you're able to receive and what is it like to receive, to really receive. And what is it does, you know, what does it do to you? It's very attractive. For example, like even, you know, that, that simple thing for me, for God to say, I miss you. And I actually listen to God say, I miss you. Or even this, right? Uh, nó có một cái bài, if you want to listen to this. By Audrey Assad, it says, good to me. If you listen to that, what if God wants to sing to you? You know, Thái Dương, you are good to me. You are good to my people. And we see that. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Because you are, you are, Thái Dương, you are good to God's people. You are good to others. You are good to yourself. And listen to that. Or, or, right? Or, um, um, again, Allow God to look at you smiling. Allow God to look at you with love. What does it mean for you to receive that? That's, wow, that's incredible. Or, right? What does it mean for you to receive forgiveness? Yeah, thank you, Christina, for putting that up good to me. So these things, so whatever, and you go out through a day, and maybe one question you can ask is, um, what obvious or disguised gifts did I receive today? Like that prayer, right? And when you receive it, know what does that do to you? Share that. So, hey, today I received this. It was obvious or it was disguised. And this is what it did to me. And this is how it helped me to bring me closer to the giver. There. Share that, because that's way, way, way attractive. Because tin mừng là gì? Tin mừng không có được diễn tả qua nên hay là phải đâu. Tin mừng diễn tả qua attraction, qua contagious. Yes, we can be, chúng ta có thể lây tình thương và lây niềm hy vọng. Because the gospel is proclaimed by attraction, first and foremost. Yeah, sometimes chúng ta nói không nên làm nữa, nhưng mà most of the time, think about it. Why are you in trường? Because we lay. We lay some experience of people in the past. You were inspired by them. You were touched by them. Yeah, share that. Cái đó sẽ lấy đó. Và cái đó, đi vào nói sao? That's the contagion of hope. That's the pandemic of love and tenderness. More powerful than any, any pandemic out there. So that's a great question. So receive and share what it means to you and invite others to receive. And especially this, right? Mình không thấy được chính mình, nhưng mình thấy được người khác nhiều lắm. So nếu mà bạn mình uống trường mà khó, khó receive, help them point it out and say, look, you are really good at this. What a gift that is. Have you thought about thanking God? Have you thought about, oh, Chúa ơi, how can I receive and develop this gift more? A lot of us don't know what our gifts are. And you pointing it out clearly, they'll be like, oh. And you can tell them, hey, look, you may have that gift, that just, that's, but that's, that's not about you. Thánh Phá nói sao? The gift is given to each person, but it's meant to build up the body of Christ. So, Receive the gift, develop the gift, and share the gift. Um, how do we decipher uh, which gifts are given by God and which gifts are like what's considered witchcraft? For example, like my mom, you know, she's Vietnamese and she does like, she can do, she, she believes in like palm reading and certain stuff in that nature to where to American culture, they would consider that witchcraft whereas you know Vietnamese Catholics and American Catholics are much different I yes that's a good question but again it's the criteria of life I would not label 
it does much, but is it truly life giving? Does it help you to trust God? Does it help you to grow in love, in faith, in charity? That's how we know the gift is from God or from some other side. Um, so there's a movie called The Gods Must Be Crazy. And you see the movie, it's a cool movie. This guy, he, he, he lives in Africa, and these people live, live, you know, live in Africa, and um, yeah, they, I mean, they live in Africa, and there are these tribal, um, this tribe that, that's isolated from you know, civilization, and a small plane flew by, and someone threw, you know, waste, uh, threw a Coke bottle outside. The Coke bottle fell down, hit this guy in the head. So that's the gift, right? But they used, it was a gift when they able to use the water bottle to draw water. But when they use the bottle water to bonk each other and hit each other in the head and steal from each other, then it's not a gift. See, and so you see, I mean, you see the difference? If it yeah. truly, but, but young people, we need to distinguish this. Is it a thrill? Is it a sugar high? Is it a one night wonder? Or is it something more steady? I have a hard time with that. No, we all do. A gift is not a high. A high will pass. A gift will last a little longer. Beyond the high, beyond the sugar high, beyond the thrill. thrill yeah, because you, know, you, hear, you hear a lot of different voices. Sure. So like... It's hard deciphering which one is the right one because you know sometimes you do you think you're doing good and then it blows up in your face and then sometimes doing less is doing more. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. So Leroy, one thing to tell this. Okay, let's take this. A thrill. You will know a thrill. It won't last. You know how? Maybe. Yeah. Yes. But we do have addiction like like binge watching. Yes. Binge watching. We do a lot, right? Yeah, yep. it's thrilling for those hours and then how does how? So when you do it long enough, when you pay attention long enough, you know. Right? Yeah. All right. So then you start to learn. It's not that life giving. It's thrilling. Sure, we need to thrill, but you know, um, you know what I learned about binge watching? I don't do it a lot, but I have episodes. You know what's most helpful for me? To binge less, Leroy. Yeah. I just well, this after. I invite I invite Jesus to watch with me, and I watch with him like a good friend. <laughs> it's very fun. And then instead of watching, <laughs> then I'm like, okay, after that show, <laughs> instead of going to next one, like a good friend, you say, hey, what do you think of that show? Oh, what, what do you think of that character? What do you think of the development? See, you slow down, and when you slow down, you binge less. Yeah. It's so simple, but I'm, I'm just learning. <laughs> We're all just learning. Yes, we are learning. It's a great question, Leroy. Um, can I tell you, Leroy, but I think what you point out is your experience. When we sometimes, a number of times, when we do something for God, chúng ta sẽ bị chỉ trích, chúng ta sẽ bị hiểu lầm, và chúng ta sẽ bị, sẽ bị hại. Jesus was very clear about this. He did not mince wood. He said, yes. So how do we know, and then sometimes, how do we know that is truly, truly um, God's, we're doing God's work, even though it's really hard. Now you guys can share your wisdom and jump in there. I'll share with you what I've learned. When I try to do something that's hard, that's against the grain, I will get pushed back, right? First of all, I try not to make it about me and them. I try not to take sides. 
like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm with God, you're not, woe on you, no, I don't. So that's actually, but you know what I do? I go to God and I say, Chúa ơi, con nghĩ con làm cái này cho Chúa. Xin Chúa dạy con nhé. Thật sự có, có, có phải của Chúa không? Just asking that question without defense tells me a lot. That is, that is not about my ego. You know what I mean? Asking that question. Chúa ơi, xin dạy cho con con làm Chúa không? Okay. Thứ hai nữa. Um, this happens a lot, and Đức Chà Thuận nói cái điều này nè. Nhiều lúc chúng ta làm cho Chúa, nhưng chúng ta không có làm vì Chúa. Ai, chúng ta không làm với Chúa. Because sometimes the way I do it is good, but I kind of plow through like a bulldozer, and I kind of knock people down. So it's a good thing that I do. It's the way I do it. Thiếu tình thương, thiếu bác ái, thiếu khiêm nhường. And the pushback is có lắc cắt chuối dãy. So it's not because I don't do the good thing the way I do it. Như Đức Chúa Thánh nói đó, chúng ta nên cẩn thận, chúng ta làm rất nhiều điều vì Chúa, nhưng chúng ta ít làm với Chúa. So then when you have this pushback, it's okay. If you're really doing it for Chúa, take it to Chúa and hỏi Chúa ơi, what's going on? Xin dạy con nhé. And if your ego is deeply involved, then you, then you will know Chúa sẽ nói, and that's when you have an opportunity. What's the opportunity? Xin lỗi Chúa, con đã, con đã nghĩ là con làm vì Chúa, rồi con cứ làm ý con, xong rồi con bắt Chúa theo con, rồi khi Chúa không theo con, cái con snack Chúa, rồi con complain với Chúa. And when that happens, I go back and I said, oh Chúa ơi, um, chắc ngay ban đầu con không làm vì Chúa rồi. So. Nhưng opportunity for what? Xin lỗi, xin tội nếu cần và học học tại vì có lẽ mình tham vọng có lẽ mình theo ý mình hơn theo ý Chúa. So. Yeah, những người làm nhiều dễ bị cái này. So can I add something cho trí? Vâng ạ. So um, based on what you have said uh, and based on Leroy's question about um, the question about knowing what is good or not because there are many voices out there uh, based on your talk you talk about remain in love uh, you talk about gifts all of this what we are talking about is about friendship about relationship with god and then if we build up if we leave that if we remain in love with god and we know and i trust that god will let you know for sure from your heart that what is good for you, what's not. So based on good relationship, give you confidence of what is good, what to take in your life. Mm. And also yeah. because of that, we also recognize the opportunity and accept it because otherwise, if we don't have a good uh, relationship with somebody, with God, we cannot. Uh, we don't have a courage or we're not open to, to, to see the opportunity or to take that opportunity. So everything is based on loving relationship with God. Um, but also, if you cultivate good friends in the Lord, if you allow them, and this is the strength. I think this is also a strength in two knee. Nếu mà mình, mình, mình gần, mình ráng gần Chúa, bạn mình trong thiếu nhi hay là giáo sứ đi ráng gần Chúa, thì có gì đó mình cũng phải nhắc nhau hay là mình hỏi nhau là Hey, tôi làm cái đó, bạn nghĩ sao? Bồ Tèo nghĩ sao? And khiêm nhường thì họ sẽ you know, xin, xin bạn cầu nguyện rồi trả lời cho tôi. They'll tell you. Giống như cho nói, because it's a relationship of love. And they will, they will tell you. And you get, you get to listen.
cái nếu mà anything else nó không thì chúng ta có thể kết thúc I think we're good to move forward with your final blessing, Chair, for, for the night, and we'll reconvene with the following week. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Hôm nay mình cầu nguyện, mình uh, nhìn về mà ngày hôm qua. Bây giờ xin mỗi người dành một phút and answer this one question. In the past hour or so, What opportunities offered for me? Chúng ta có cơ hội gì qua buổi gặp gỡ này? Nếu chúng ta rõ, có thể cảm ơn Chúa và xin Chúa cho chúng ta nhận. If you're not clear what the opportunity is, then ask for the grace to Pay attention. And if you can, uh, put out your hands like this, mọi người. And imagine that opportunity you're holding, highlight at least the desire to know the opportunity. And then opportunity to you. Dear God, thank you for this opportunity together And this opportunity to take the next step to grow in relationship with you. We thank you. And we ask your blessing on each of us tonight as we try to receive and respond to your gift, to your opportunity to grow with you. And we do so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Xin tình thương Chúa ở cùng ban sức sống và gìn giữ mọi người trong tối này. Amen.